What is going on guys? We are here with first place Deep Patel and fourth place Richard Yam, who you guys have seen plenty of times on this channel already. He did it again, he topped with Zoro. And uh, we got a nice double deck profile for you guys. They both played the exact same list. You know, they cooked it up and we're gonna talk about it here. So uh, let's get right into it guys. So congratulations again, uh, both of you. Deep first place is, is amazing. Congratulations for that. And Richard, again, another top. Um, I know you didn't get a Luffy because it was only top two, but I think that would have been like your fourth Luffy, which is crazy, you know, You're making a huge impact on the competitive scene. So congratulations. So let's see, let's, let's talk about what you guys played here. Yeah, I mean, uh, we played Zoro. Yeah. And it's very similar to OPO2 style. Um, OPO3 brought a lot of new stuff. Um, obviously, we brought in the Ezo package. And we really want to incorporate the more searchers, right? So, you know, Ezo can only search Whitebeard. So we kind of picked the best Whitebeard cards. So the ones we chose were Haruda. Uh, we had this the last format. And Joe's the last format, which is counter. And the new Marco 5k cost. So essentially what we kind of brought in this format is uh, more removal. Uh, this kind of, Marco has replaced Nico Robbins because you know, it's just infinitely better to uh, destroy something on play. And Haruda, um, you may not know what this does, but essentially it's like the star deck uh, Nami from you know, the star deck, which is uh, after your main, add one rest of Dawn to your leader or character. Uh, it's very powerful um, having an additional Dawn every turn. And it's a, it's a low end drop. It's only two uh, two down for three k. So uh, at the end of the day, it still swings in like with one one down and it's Zoro. So um, this deck is go go in, go fast, go hard. Like just... some of the things that I also want to say is when playing this deck, like when we played Marcos, most of the Zoros in the format are playing event cards. So it's kind of like also like a cool mind game where like they don't know what we're on everyone's thinking that we're playing event cards mm -hmm. so you can get away with swinging with marcos and them thinking they either gotta not swing into it at all or swing into it and put more than what they need um and another cool thing is because marco is six usually they, they would like uh, if it's if you're playing mirror matches they, you, they would swing in for fives right at your leader marco's one of those people that like they have to put more than what they actually have on their leader to swing in which was good um, and like he said, this card was really good. And in general, we wanted to, he came up with the number 15 because um, in general, that's like the best amount of targets that you can have in your deck. So as you'll see, we have 15 of these and then we also have 15 of the straw hats. Right, so 15 searchable Ezo targets and then 15 searchable Nami targets. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Anything else you want to say? Yeah, I mean, uh, not for this part of the engine. You can do this. Yeah. We also played Nami, uh, we played Sunny. Uh, this is kind of like the OPO2 stuff they were talking about. Brooks, Zoros, and then we played Luffy's. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, um, yeah, so, so first, like, you know, here is OPO, like, Rush, o, uh, Zoro, very standard. Um, if you've kind of followed uh, Card Ape and, and my deck profiles in the past, uh, we saw that we, had, we played uh, Edward Newgate in OPO2. Um, the reason why we don't play, and it's such about Ezo, and the reason why we don't play it is because of Yellow um, Katakuri. Especially and mostly more the ten mom ten drop ten cost mom is what we're um, is why we don't play because if you ever play Newgate on nine and they drop big mom on ten, you essentially just lost a card and they gain a card and they have a bigger body in your Newgate. So right. the temple plate is really bad against uh, yellow. So we have to kind of find a way to kind of substitute that. And Lu uh, Rush Luffy was kind of the substitute. Um, it, it kind of does the uh, same thing what Newgate does on 9, so if you ever play Newgate 9, your leader swings for 7. Instead of swinging to 7, we go 7 leader and then Luke will come in at 9. So we get 2 swings instead of just 1. And again, similar to what Mark, uh, Marco earlier, it's a 6k body, so uh, if you swing to it, you, would, you, know, you get more Dawn advantage. Right. And Black, this format, is more, it's like, it got more stronger, right? So it had more unblockables, uh, I think it's called... Um, was it like Fuka or something like the yeah. three, three yeah. minute yeah. blocker that yep. can't be KO'd? So yeah. our Mar Marcos and Vistas are useless. So having that like unblockable rusher, like, just them knowing it or not even knowing it, is a surprise factor, and you can just you can get for game with this card. So um, really, just like a uh, overall good addition to our replacement to a new gate. And um, this deck got kind of more consistent because uh, we, we got um, four Sunnies, four Nami's, and four Ezos. Uh, what this means is 12 starter cards. So that's about, math goes up to like 75% chance to open at least one of them. Okay, so with two mulligans, you should be able to open one. Like 
Uh, in my game, in my like nine rounds, I had one game which I lost, which I didn't actually open one of the, uh, any of those. So like, you can, you know, it's still statistics. You can, you can open it, but it makes it like very consistent. Like even just opening Sunny is fine because you know Sunny's a three K. You don't always have to search something, but just being able to do something every turn and do it effectively is what makes this deck so strong and so effective. Right. Something else about like this part of the lineup. This is the same reason why in last format we also chose to play Zoro most of the format because against most of the red decks, if you're more aggro than them, then they will be at a loss, right? In general, this part of the engine helps you be way more aggro than this part of the engine, right? This part of the engine helps you control the board a little bit more, removal. This part of the engine is helping you be aggro, right? right. So I remember in times where I was playing mirror matches and they'd be playing Teach or event cards and they would try to drop their rushers, which they'd have one of like, I don't know, whatever, like Zoro they have. And then I would have two Zoros to come back or a Zoro and a Luffy or something. And them not knowing that I could put more attacks on the board, most of the time that was a difference of me winning the game versus them. Right. Um, so. Yeah. Awesome. And just having both lineups, like um, you can kind of choose, pick and choose. Like if you're ever against you know, mirror match, but you might want to see more Ezo sides to pop the board. You know, against black, you might want to see the Nami side. So it gives you more diversity than just kind of like a linear uh, play style. Of, like this is my game plan every single game. Mm -hmm. And then the last twelve cards we played was um, for the Dawn, uh, puts the whole deck together for Magro and for Makino. Right. Yeah. I mean, if you say you're just eight pumpers, these are the best cards in your deck. Another searcher, so we have 12 search in the deck. This deck is actually just like, you can't, like, you, you don't run out of gas. Mm -hmm. um, uh, you may have noticed that we don't play Otama, uh, that's a huge one. Um, we, the reason is one, we couldn't fit in the deck because, you know, we, as we said, we have 15 targets uh, for each side, so that comes out to 38 cards already, for, including the searchers, and that leaves 12 like open slots. Um, obviously, we need the pumpers, so that's like the core of the deck, and you know, uh, the Don adding more like a one drop is really core. Otama really helps you to like uh, trade board, and that's one of the things like, that we kind of trade off is like, let's play Otama, let's not trade board, that's not. And you know, playing Otama, you essentially just lose a card, right? Because Otama's not really doing anything on board. Right. So. Most of the time, you want to keep it as a 2k, and I know that you put in the Juzos to make it a searchable yeah. 2k, basically. So, so. Here, as of this moment, uh, we have 11 2ks uh, versus the 12, which is like perfectly fine, it's one less. Mm -hmm. And just not having that ability to trade board um, effectively uh, is, is a trade-off, but at the same time, it just means we gotta go in, like, go in faster and, go, and just, you know, trading with what we have. Awesome. So one of the reasons why I think also these cards are so important is because they could have a one-cost event card that gives them the 3K, but we also have a lot of one-cost pumpers that give us 3K. So that was a trade-off that I was thinking we were making by playing these and not the event cards. They're still searchable, right? But the fact that it could give you 3K on command and they absorb an attack. Like for example, like this could be a 2K in your, like counter in your hand, but it's so much different than Otama because when this hits the board, they have to attack it. Right. Instead of Otama, they could just leave it there, right? They don't really care about it. Actually, it's just stopping space on the board. So I think that's why these one, and this one stays in attack, which is even better because you could pump one off the other and it like, it goes crazy. So, yeah, and obviously we're playing Zoro, but like Zoro's. Awesome. Crazy. So uh, overall, what do you think your worst matchup is? Uh, for me, it was Yellow Cat Carry. Um, sometimes when they hit the first two triggers, like a, like a Cracker or even a Press Caro, um, they can trade board much more efficiently and they just kind of have that like... They can get sacky too. Yeah, get very yeah. sacky. There's nothing you can do about that mechanic. Um, but like in the long tournament, like nine rounds, like you can't rely on just like triggers and lucky. Right, right. Uh, that means, you know, you're likely to lose a couple games, which is not what we want. Like we want to have a consistent game. And if we do get like, you know, sacked by yellow, you know, it, it sucks, but like it ha it'll happen. But again, like we're trying to play the consistency game. This is the most consistent deck to do so. I want to give shout outs before we forget. I want to give shout outs to Richard, first of all, because I wasn't playing a lot of One Piece before this event. I kind of took like a break. Uh, when I came back, Richard had been working on this deck for a long time. So most of the credit is him. I just played it. Um, but I'm happy that most of the people that play this deck, there's me, him, and then one, one of our other friends, two of us did well, right? So it was like really good. Um, and the conversion of this deck was really good. Uh, we'll see how it goes moving forward yeah. too. Even with the break, like, yeah, he's still a good player. And like, just to show that like this deck, this deck fill is like very consistent. And, like he knew what to do with it like it, it's just like kind of like you know he saw the searchers he saw the cards like mm -hmm. like he knew like he didn't brick because you know that's what the deck's supposed to do in the operation just kind of consistently do what we're supposed to do so i think this deck is like very good uh, overall but you know after this deck is posted we'll see how it transitions and <laughs> yeah well, one more thing also if you ever compare like the o ocg right ocg meta to ours like this deck hasn't been shown up anywhere 
like you'll never see a deck like this mm -hmm. anywhere in the OCG. So like, it's also really good that we have a Discord group and like we're making strides in like One Piece meta game and we're changing the game, which is crazy because even the OCG people are not coming up with yeah. us like in, that. In Japan, so big. Yeah, like you don't, you'll never see these. In right, Japan. those those eight like, cards. Uh, yeah. There's like you know the deck list and um, I was that's where I kind of started off like with Japan plays. I'm like, it kinda, it's kind of slow. It wasn't really fast. I'm, I was always wondering why they don't play like these cards, right? Um, and I actually think this, like Vesta, is actually much better than the 5 cost Marco. Mm -hmm. um, because what happens is like a lot of new decks are getting searchers. So they're getting like 1 mana 2Ks or 2 mana 3Ks, whatever it is. And what you want to do is you want to get rid of those searchers so that your Machinos are coming in for free, right? So and taking the hit after. Taking a hit from a leader, right. not a 2K, yeah. right? Yeah. So that's a huge like difference, right? So I, like, having Vesta to like clear like the, the early board and then playing Machino to pop you guys, it's so cost effective. Like I, I can't see why people, like people are not playing this. Because mm -hmm. um, uh, honestly, five cost Marco. Like I don't even know how many times. I played yeah. So I, I, I was saying this. Like five cost Marco. When you're going first and you have five mana and you drop it to clear something, it's almost like a Vista, but you're dropping it on turn three. Basically, does the same thing. But other than that, as you go later in the game, it's not as good as like other cards would be in general. Like Luffy, you're just with the presence, or Zoro even. So yeah. Um, then. That just speaks for like, you know, for our decks, like black, yellow, like, I uh, always start with like the Japanese builds, but like, I think there's a lot more potential in every other deck. Don't just kind of like copy and paste your list and expect that's the most optimal list. Like, there's still a lot of room to grow in every deck. I think like, I've been testing a bunch of stuff with different colors and like, uh, I think that, you know, this game is not stale as it should be. People think that Jap Japan's figured it out, but I think there's way more to grow. Also, it's a cycle. So if someone makes a change in the deck, like, other decks are gonna follow. Right, to it's gonna change the whole meta. The meta. Yeah, yeah exactly. Like you know, now people are gonna start playing this, yeah. and then people are gonna start building things to beat this. Exactly. Right? So. Which, which is great. I think that's the way that yeah. it, it should be going. But Any that's awesome. Uh, I mean, you can do shoutouts. I'm just trying to. I got shoutouts to everybody. <laughs> the, all the boys on the Discord: Harry, Aiden, Beckford, uh, Carde, Richard for yeah. sure. Cool, someone missing. Joe. There's so many people. Shoutouts to everybody. Um, hopefully, next time we go, we bring something new as well. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you guys so much and congratulations again.